Shai, Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, the Moanis to the Apostles and the Elders Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek up there doing this work of faith and labor of love, truth, sincerity. All right, I want to get into a quick um, uh, Great Millstone uh, health topic, you know, touching on uh, the liver and the gallbladder. You know, basically dealing with uh, liver and gall, liver stones and gallbladder stones, gall stones. You know, and um, because you know, so many of our people Jake out there. You know, what I'm saying, and there may be some brothers in the truth, which you know, what I'm saying, if you've been in the truth for a while, you should know about herbs and you know, what I'm saying, how to start to handle things on your own. You know, but many of our people out there don't know how to, <clears throat> how to take care of these uh, rather easier. Uh, ailments or problems to deal with, you know, and it's it's crazy, man. But you know, just um, uh, knowing, you know, uh, uh, what I know now, I'm grateful for it. So, of course, you know, we got to share this knowledge, you know, what I'm saying to uh, help other brothers out there that might be going through some troubles and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's various ways you can go about it, but you know, one way is to never go to ease off of no damn surgery of no gallstones, man. You know, I was talking to this woman uh, that started at my job, and you know, she was telling me how she had and how gallbladder removed that she young, man. You know what I'm saying? A young Jake, like you know, like the 30s. You know what I'm saying? So it's like our people really don't know anything, and it's no matter how bad your situation is, like uh, unless you like at a an extreme rate of some sort of uh, cancer stage four, stage five, something like that. Then you don't have to go to Esau for these things. You know what I'm saying? You know, dealing with uh, liver, liver stones and gallstones. First and foremost, we all know it always what pertains to what the diet. You know, and if you're not sure where the liver is located, the liver is located uh, on the right side of the body, underneath your right rib, and the gallbladder is right up underneath the liver. I'm saying towards towards the left side of it. All right, so you know, pretty much, the the liver itself helps to uh, the liver creates bile. The liver itself is a look at the liver as a chemical manufacturing plant. That's what the liver is. The liver has over 500 jobs, in which it does. So that's like a chemical manufacturing plant. You know, it produces so many different chemicals for the body. Uh, natural chemicals for the body that that's helpful beneficial um, and, and things like that so one of the things that the liver produces the liver produces bile and the gallbladder stores this bile that the liver produces you know uh, in order to help it uh, uh, you know push when you when you eating and everything so your foods could be digested it's all a part of digestion so your foods can be properly digested and that they, 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 uh, the stored bile that the gallbladder holds, you know, when you're eating and your body is digesting it, is to push out that bile to help promote, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> you go into the bathroom and to help uh, buffer the acids that come through in the food and to help to scrape the intestinal walls, you know, of any debris and crap, you know, that we may eat through our diet, you know. But pretty much what happens is, you know, you get different forms of stones and the primary, primarily the ones that our people usually suffer from is uh, cholesterol stones, you know, uh, from un undigested, you know, they say undigested cholesterol and all of that. But, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, they don't really deal like that. You know what I'm saying? It's really not uh, undigested cholesterol. You know what I'm saying? All it pretty much is, is your body not being able to produce everything in which it needs and the liver getting over intoxicated, you know, with these different toxins. So, you know, it's trying to constantly push more bowel, you know, produce more bowel and push more bowel to the gallbladder for it, uh, you know, to, to help out. You know what I'm saying? It's for it to help out the load because the liver is being overloaded with so many toxic chemicals uh, at one time. So once the liver gets, uh, uh, you know, heavily bogged up, you know, it's pushing a lot of, you know what I'm saying, that stuff to the gallbladder for protection. You know, because the liver, what the liver typically does is when, when toxins enter, enter the body, 
number one, your body has a, a cholesterol buffering system. So it's really no such thing as bad cholesterol because your body naturally produces both uh, uh, LDL and HDL, right? So your body produces the cholesterol. That's the main buffering system for acids. Second, the, 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 the next system that the body will use if, you know, like say for instance, right, you have a, somebody with clogged arteries. Now the cholesterol comes into those arteries because you have holes within those arteries. So the liver produces the cholesterol and you know it spreads it out to patch it to patch up you know those arteries as a band-aid. And then you have the other cholesterol, because I'll be forgetting it mixed up sometimes, then you have the other cholesterol which comes in and sweeps it out once that hole is prepared. So by that hole not getting prepared, that cholesterol gets bogged up. Uh, within that uh, that area, and then the doctors will say, "Oh, you, you, your cholesterol is high." Well, that's only because you keep eating the bad things. That's more so intoxic uh, intoxicating the body and primarily the liver, to where the liver's like, "Yo, I gotta keep producing more. I gotta keep producing more. I gotta keep producing more." And so on and so forth. And so that cholesterol doesn't go anywhere, and it stays there. And plus, from the diet and, and things that we eat too, all of the mainly the dairy foods and stuff like that helping it to get clogged up you know what i'm saying and, and all gooey and, and stuff like that right so that's pretty much how that process works so with the uh the, as i was getting into as with the um the liver getting bogged up now it, it can't it can only handle but so much and it can the liver can handle a lot you know even though we have these weak bodies even though we have these weak bodies our body can still handle a lot compared to you know everything that we ingest on a daily look at all the, the chemicals the toxic chemicals in the air all the crappy everything that we eat pretty much within the society is pretty much crap so you know even though we're weak we still have you know pretty resilient bodies and Esau knows that Jake has a way more stronger a, a body than them you know so uh, so by the liver being over intoxicated Know, it's passing on a lot of more of that that sludge and toxins to the gallbladder and the gallbladder uh, uh, gets bogged up and it starts to form it into stones the liver does this as well you know when a lot as I was getting saying like a lot of a lot of the toxins that the, uh, that comes into the body you know one of the one of the top line of defense uh, is your liver so what your liver will do is it identify the toxins it target the toxins and it'll tell the body to wrap it up. And then if you don't uh, wrap it up in, in that uh, cholesterol or the, uh, and stuff like that as to, to, in order to buffer it, but once it can't buffer because you're not detoxing or you're still not eating right, now the body naturally begins to store it as fat. Okay, so that's what happens. So a lot of the toxins that come into the body uh, you know, and the body can't get rid of it because of our poor diets. The, the liver sends that cholesterol out and then the cholesterol wraps it up, but then the body stores it as fat. And so the same thing pretty much happens in essence with the gallbladder to a degree. You know, it's just being over intoxicated. So what? It's just engulfing itself into a ball in order to protect our lives to, from being over intoxicated and it's protecting the intestines from being over intoxicated you know, with all of these uh, uh, bad chemicals and stuff, you know, because toxins burn, acids burn, just like, you know, battery acid. So at times, if you're eating something really acidic or like, you know, I'm still on the detox now, if I get off this, if I was to get off this detox and I was to go eat a bunch of crap, I'm going to feel that burn coming through, you know, my intestines, you know, so the liver and gallbladder, it, it work in combination to help to protect the body from these different acids, as all of the body systems do. You know, but now all of these stones start to form and you can have also liver stones as well. Now, all of the herbs that you that you can use <clears throat> for the liver, you know, because there's so many different herbs that's good for the liver. It's so many, I'm not going to mention all of them. But, you know, of course, you know, uh, uh, dandelion, turmeric. Uh, uh, the two main ones that I want to kind of talk about, uh, chanca piedra and, um, and uh, uh, sapo. Uh, Yerba del Sapo, you know, you got you got that. You got, uh, of course, milk thistle, leaf and seed. You got uh, baldo, baldo leaf. 
you know what I'm saying? You got a uh, 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 flag, was it a uh, flagpole, a blue flag? I forgot the name of that one. Um, you, you have so many different herbs of uh, fennel, you know what I'm saying? Fenugreek, all these different things are great for the liver. So any herbs that's pretty much great for the liver are usually good for the gallbladder as well. You know, but of course you do have more specific herbs for the gallbladder, but they, since they're connected on top of each other, they work in tandem. But uh, specifically, if you really want to target them more, the main things, uh, the, like I said, those two main herbs right there, Chanka Piedra, also known as stone breaker, is known to break up not only kidney stones, but gall stones as well. It helps to break them down. And the same thing, for uh, Yerba del Sapo, or you just call it Sapo for short, they help to break up kidney stones as well as gallbladder stones. They help to soften them up. And oftentimes, your gallstones will usually be green. And I noticed because I, I, I pushed them out. You know what I'm saying? Going through detoxes and stuff like that. And, it, and sometimes if you have a little pain underneath your right side, and if you detox it, even if you're not detoxing, if you put a little pain up under your right rib, then you know more than likely that's probably from gallstones or if you're in a det or if you're in detox mode, you know, you may like and you feel that pain, that's your gallbladder opening up to push out some of the stones. You know, and I, I passed some out uh my actually my last uh detox, you know, so so far during this detox I really couldn't tell, you know, but I know definitely the last two detoxes I pushed out uh, uh stones. I'm sure I have this time as well, but I just may have not noticed it. You know, so those two herbs are really, really great. And you can mix those with dandelion, mix them with a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of uh, fenugreek or fennel. And, and that's a powerhouse right there, you know. But also, it's a protocol, you know, uh, for the gallbladder, the uh, liver and gallbladder flush. You know, you'll pretty much drink uh, apple juice. And it's best to get a good apple juice. You could drink the cheap one. You know, but it's best to get an apple juice from like Whole Foods or something like that. You know, that's more pure and that contains a higher con content of malic acid because malic acid helps to dissolve stones. It helps to dissolve them. It helps to soften up the stones. You know, so that would be uh, easier, easier, more easily uh, exited out of the body. So you would drink that for a few days, maybe four to five days, maybe up to a week. You know, at least 32 ounces. Uh, throughout the day uh, and, and at least like 16 ounces when you wake up first thing in the morning having nothing on your stomach you'll want to ingest some um, some of that right they say you can use uh, Epsom salt but I don't I don't use Epsom salt I don't be putting that stuff in my body like that but that helps to open up the bile ducts so you can actually do a little bit of uh, Epsom salt and water too you know what I'm saying to help open up uh, the bile ducts uh, for the uh, liver and the gallbladder, you know, and and on a day that you're actually ready to do it, so say you do all that for four days straight, you know, you're drinking the apple juice to help to soften up the stones, stuff like that, and you know, you've been, you know, moving your bowels regularly, you're on detox mode, or even if you're not on detox mode, but it would be better if you were on a, a detox program doing this, all right, so now that fourth or fifth day, or whatever the case may be, you would take a quarter cup of uh, olive oil, a quarter cup of uh, a lemon or a lime <coughs> juice, and uh, a quarter cup of grapefruit. And you will mix all of that up together. You know, and every 15 minutes for about an hour and a half. So say you, you know, you start off at nine o'clock. So. Uh, from at nine o'clock, you'll take a quarter cup. Uh, no one, yeah, one, one, yeah, quarter cup, one fourth of a cup. All right, at nine, then at nine fifteen, then at nine thirty, then at ten o'clock, then ten fifteen, then ten thirty. So you'll do it five or six times. It's going to taste. It's not going to taste good. I'm telling you that right now. It's not going to taste good. But you'll do that. Okay. Uh, that those many amount of times, you know, from that time period. Then after that, make sure you're going to bed right after that. So make sure it's a time where you know, okay, I'm gonna go to bed at this time. So I'm gonna schedule that, at, you know, with X amount of time, whatever. So I go right to bed. So as soon as it, after you do that, you go 
you go into bed, you lay down on your right side for at least 20 to 40 minutes. Lay down on your right side because that's where your gallbladder is at and that's going to help the stones to empty out into the system. So probably somewhere during the middle of the night or early when you wake up, you might have to rush to the bathroom. It's not going to be too, too crazy, but you will have to rush to the bathroom. So once you go to the bathroom, then you know you should notice because the olive oil is you know it helps to lubricate everything so it helps to get the stones out so by the time you go to the bathroom you should be releasing some stones you know and the more uh detox you are you know what i'm saying the better off you will be to release these stones you could do it without detoxing so don't let that discourage any brothers and something you could do it without detoxing but it's better you know what i'm saying you know if you been already detoxing that'll help it even further because you've been already moving your bells constantly and frequently and you don't have that much holding you up so you can do that protocol you know if you're suffering from gallstones or anything like that but even in an emergency case if you just need to do it you know then you could just go ahead and do it just at least make sure you know at least like you've been just drinking a lot of apple juice either that day or the day before if you need to do it for an emergency case if something is really bothering you that bad an emergency case for at least a day or two you know just drink is drink a lot of uh that apple juice to try to soften up the stones as much as possible and just do the protocol now you might not release that many stones you know the the, the first couple times and this is a program protocol that you do every six weeks so you might not release uh a, a lot of stones those first couple of times but the more you do it the more uh, you'll see stones coming out you know but at least you'll have some relief from pushing something out to give the gallbladder some room in your in your body some room to breathe so you will release some tension off of yourself and you can do this every six weeks you don't want to push it more than that because what you're actually doing is you're spasming delivering the gallbladder so that's not something that you want to constantly do on a regular basis you know so uh, you know that's a good protocol for, you know for brothers out there or anybody out there that's watching you know what I'm saying that you could take hold upon. I did it myself a couple of times, uh, and uh, you know I, I moved some stones. I moved some stones, and even at times without me doing a protocol, because you know I detox often, I release stones. So uh, the first time, you know, was only a couple. The second time, I think I had about like eight to ten. You know, and then after that, you know, I was just regularly detoxing, and I just saw, you know, them coming out periodically. Now, some people go on this, you know, and they release, you know, uh, maybe a couple. Then the second time, some people release hundreds. So it all depends on you and, and your body, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, hey, that's a good protocol for brothers to use out there. So I hope, uh, you know, the segment was edifying, you know. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash, Nebuana to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone. And shalom to let out there doing this work of faith and labor, love, truth, sincerity. Shalom.